So morning day two, just having some coffee. Uh, there's a bit of frost on the ground. I don't know if you can see that. So it was a bit cool. I expected it to be uh, below zero. That's uh, the forecast for the closest weather station. It said below zero, minus one. Um, that's not, it's not too bad. Um, so uh, I'm going to try the shortcut today. <laughs> um, I, I, I think it'll be fine. And that'll cut off, I don't know how many. I, I must have spent, after that road that I saw, I must have spent at least another hour trying to trying to get across those rivers and uh, of course the rest of the way I have a better idea what I'm in for so uh, should be a little bit smoother sailing today uh, of course if you if you come here in like July or August it'd probably be a non-issue probably just would be a stroll down the valley uh, but certainly May 24th uh, there's and it, and it did rain for quite a bit uh, in the last week or so well in the last week it rained a lot so um, the rivers are high as well so, I'm going to enjoy my coffee in the view and uh, get some breakfast, pack up, and head out. Well, it's been a good campsite, but now it is time to go. Uh, it is 10 after 8. Um, I'm going to head back to that shortcut, hopefully, and um, maybe I'll brave the water twice to to get the shot. So hopefully all goes well. So I just came from my camp over there. Unfortunately I had to put my boots on. There's a couple stream crossings and the crocs wouldn't cut it because you know within like two minutes this is what I saw this road and uh, I came in up there from that ridge kind of walked up that's when I saw this valley and then walked down below and then found some places to camp. So now, this is, you can see sort of indentations like it's an old road. And uh, I'd say horses still use it. I didn't come all the way down here yesterday. I came to about here, but. <clears throat> yeah, and I was hoping to do one of those shots and come back across the river I'm just I'm not so sure now it's looking actually a little more challenging from here than there Ooh. yikes huh. all right maybe I'll pokey down the river a little bit but Oh, there's the road. If I just get across there, I'm home free. Huh. Oh my god. Whew. <laughs> well, I made it. <laughs> uh, it, it. It wasn't as deep as it looked. I was prepared to turn around. It was deeper than the other one. It kind of got me uh, like right above the knee. It's a couple inches deeper than the other one. And uh, I faced, like, I don't know, that down there is not really good, <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, I had to, I had to face up river a little bit to kind of brace myself as well, so it was definitely, um, now that on this side it was fun, on that side I was very apprehensive, so I told myself a few times, be prepared to turn around, right, I mean, it's a pain in the ass, a real pain in the ass to go back the other way. Uh, I mean, it's like multiple streams and rivers and flooded forests. Real pain in the ass. I'm pretty sure this is going to take me about 15 minutes to get back to where it probably took me two hours yesterday. Um, today would probably be an hour and a half so I know where I'm going, but still. So that was, uh, that was exciting. <laughs> and it's the kind of river crossing you want to film. <laughs> that water's just too damn cold. I mean, forget it. I... I and I don't want to push my luck either, but it, it would look good on tape, but oh well. Anyway, so as you can see, you can see why I wanted to get over here. It's very much uh, a road. I'm sure the horses use this. So I'm quite, quite excited just to stroll down this trail, meet up with the other trail, and get on my way here. Uh, a couple more obstacles to go. I'm still extremely 
worried about that carcass area and the only creepy part of the forest, the iron, the irony of it all. Um, I will not be filming that. I'll be going through very quickly, bear spray in hand, air horn in hand, I'll be motoring. So anyway, let's get trekking. Yeah, so behind me is the trail I just came up from the crossing. It took me seven minutes to get back to the spot, exactly where I was yesterday. Uh, I'm going to download the GPS tracks and I'm going to see how what the time difference was. As I swear, it like, must have been at least an hour and a half bushwhacking and what a mess that was. So, uh, And that was seven minutes. I crazy um well you don't know you don't know uh and everything online um again i thought the trail's on the other side that's where you cross so hey nice to learn so uh yeah rather than go down there which was i mean it's just a breeze so i went down that way towards the river and then ended up bushwhacking back and crossing all sorts of garbage in the trees over there so back on my trail now and uh learned a bit um, you know in, in hindsight I'm wondering if I could have crossed Trap Creek right over there um, I don't think I would try it um, is obviously that's that's that was easier I think I think you could probably do it but you know you don't have to you can just go down that way so oh boy so I think that's what you call an epic fail <laughs> Uh, so all my preparation for passing by that carcass again, which of course I was quite nervous about, uh, in my mind I thought I had to go through this fence first. I just didn't remember correctly. And no doubt, you know, when I put the tape together, it'll be obvious, but um, it's not. It's down there. And, you know, that's, that's another good, you know, you just have to think about these things, right? Another good use of a GPS is to mark things. And if I was smart, um, I would have put a waypoint when I felt safe down the trail from that carcass. So I would know, um, oh, now is when I need to start paying attention. Because I was walking on the trail and there's kind of a little bit of a, a bit of a little bit of a side hill there, which I recognized. I'm going up and I'm going, boy, this looks familiar. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, so I come down, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. So I grabbed my, you know, I got all the stuff off my, I got the bear spray. I got, I got my trekking poles out at that point. So I was totally unprepared. I just, I just hollered through and, and, uh, you know, I got my bear spray, my air horn. I just spent the next five minutes, you know, bear spray in hand, air horning, yo bearing, uh, but now I'm behind this extremely sturdy, no doubt, bear-proof fence. Uh, I think I'm on the other side of it. So there you go. Um, lessons learned, I suppose. So now I got a river crossing here. Uh, if I remember correctly, which is debatable, I think I just leave my Crocs on. And I got another river crossing shortly up ahead. The river split here through the trees. I can see the other half of the river. So I'm pretty sure where I cross is that split. I don't think it's far away, so so two birds and one stone, not a big deal. Um, that was just silliness. Oh well, boots off. So looks like I got that bit right. Uh, about um, 180, 200 feet on is this crossing here. Yesterday I came across across this sort of natural bridge, and of course I left my boots off today in my crock, so I'm just going to cross. Easy peasy. So that was freezing cold. Um, so that's an easy one. Now I think I'm back to boots and gaiters by the looks of it. It's a long trek in the snow. And to show you the next shortcut I think should work, avoiding the peninsulas and the islands. So when I get to that road I found, I'm going to keep going straight on it. I think I'll get to that one river crossing. It doesn't actually save a river crossing, but it'll, it's, it certainly would have saved me wandering around for half an hour trying to get out of all that. So I'll be the next stop, I think. That's worthless. 
So yeah, this is uh, this is definitely where I screwed up yesterday. I should have crossed here. There's a nice obvious tree to mark the spot. Um, I guess I just walked right past it and didn't see it. Um, so I ended up wandering down there quite a bit. I think I just I think I went down this path actually because it looks quite promising. Uh, but that was the wrong thing to do. Anyway, um, so easy river cross crossing there. I, I did try and scout out um, somewhere I could rock hop, and that didn't pan out, so I just did this. Uh, and, and while I was getting my boots off, so the wind it's a little windy now. It's cooling off. Hopefully it doesn't rain. That suck. And I didn't have my hat cinched on properly, and it blew into the river, and it was floating away. I just happened to have my trekking pole in my hand, and I reached around and just swatted it and got it. Otherwise, I've been chasing my damn hat down the river, or would have caught up in the middle of... Uh. So, I'm starting to collect a list. Literally, I'm making a list of some of the dumb stuff I've done on this hike. <laughs> That was, I guess that's that one I put on the list. <laughs> Maybe I'll do another video on that. I can hear the helicopter. Oh, there it is. Well, we can't see it here. <laughs> that is for uh, a friend over at uh, Backcountry Pilgrim, I think it's called. Backpacking Pilgrim. Anyway, good channel. <laughs> Probably I'll pick it up with the camera. But there we go. Inside joke, I guess. So I noticed back here, I'm actually going backwards now. The road, the trail diverged from the road. I just kind of wanted to see why. I could see these rocks, which I know aren't great for horses. And then it just gets messy and ugly and the road is actually now become a river where the road used to be so that's why the trail's now over here so I'm gonna go back over there and uh, make it easier myself yeah I don't remember this one I think I may have crossed on that log yesterday and just got my foot wet on that last rock uh, going back the other way could be tricky, but doable. And I just don't feel like taking my boots off. I really don't. So I don't know. I might give it a shot. What a pain in the ass! Thought I was done. Ah, brothers. Yeah, I'm really close to where I was yesterday. The grass, sorry, the uh, mountain head root for the scramblers I mentioned. Nice little camping spot. I just don't remember all this water coming through here um i don't think i'm off the trail i think the trail is here somewhere i just don't quite remember being this bad oh so maybe the water is, is just still rising maybe the rain from last week and i only stopped on like saturday last week you know a couple days ago is kind of just getting this far but that that makes this interesting <laughs> in this certainly makes it interesting in this time of year is you know the trail is hard to keep to, to, to spot there's all these side trails and roads that may or may not be the trail then you have to avoid the water and god knows what else so uh i'll figure something out anyway i just got to keep basically going straight and i should hit that little camping spot well that was interesting um I think the water has risen enough to inundate where the trail was at that part. Uh, it certainly wasn't like that yesterday, I'm pretty sure. Um, I do remember a lake yesterday at some point, that could be anywhere, but uh, that was rivers running through it. <laughs> um, you know, I started side hailing to get around it, and you know, as I'm doing that I come across another trail, which looks, which I'm like, that's not a bad looking trail, it's kind of going uphill. Um, and away from here, I was like, well, you know what, I'll I'll sort of bushwhack back down. And that worked out. I found the trail again. So here I am at the camp spot. Um, I want to get some water. Uh, I'm probably the last fill, I think, for the final push. Um, I just kind of go up there and hang your right and I'm back on the road. 
it could be that little trail I found back there actually meets up uh, if, if you if you keep going on that road left maybe it meets up with that trail but I wouldn't bank on it, it didn't seem like much of a trail uh, and you know again just there's so many animal trails and then you get the road the horse trail it's it's just a you really just have to pay attention and go with your gut <laughs> I guess <laughs> anyway I'll get some water and uh, make a move so this is an interesting lesson of how water moves. It's windy and blustery now, but um, the trail up the grass pass for a decent section of it now is just, it's just mud and water running down the hill. And it was not like this yesterday at all. Not even one little muddy section, but not, not this. So, you know, the rain stopped Saturday morning, I think, and it's Monday noonish, I think. And uh, it just takes a while for the water to get here and to get to other places. So, I mean, I probably was not wrong back there when I said the water in that trail was, was new, and uh, I think it was. And even this morning, uh, the creek. Um, looked higher not much but a little bit higher than it did yesterday when I looked at it last night it looked very doable this morning I was like mm. hmm <laughs> anyway, it was fine but yeah trap even trap creek looks a bit higher but yeah this trail is not like this yesterday so interesting that is an old tree I don't know how old a pine tree needs to be in these parts to get to be about four feet wide that's at least four feet wide. I don't know what that makes the diameter. It's a two pi r. Who the hell knows? Anyway, big tree, very old.